is Victoria with Elite Medical Prep, and today we are going to be interviewing Brian Carmody, the Sheriff of Sodium. Uh, you might have heard of the Sheriff of Sodium blog um, as you're browsing online, maybe searching for different topics about medical education. Uh, we think this blog is really cool because it's kind of this like op-ed mixed with factual information type blog, um, and it's really fun to read. And so we thought, why not interview Brian um, and talk a little bit about his inspiration um, and his thought process behind the articles, answer some questions about one of his most recent hot topic articles talking about the numeric score uh, assigned to USMLE exams. So let's get into it. Hi, Brian. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful. So we already know you are the sheriff of sodium, but could you explain a little bit more about who are you? What's your background? Uh, all of that good stuff that readers are, might be curious about. Sure. So I'm a uh, I'm a pediatric nephrologist, and um, and I also work in medical education, which is um, which is sort of how I became the the, the self proclaimed sheriff of sodium. Very cool, amazing. Um, and so, what prompted you um, to want to found kind of the sheriff of sodium blog? We noticed that the tagline is salty about medical education. That's kind of a a cool tagline. So what makes you salty about medicine and what was your inspiration for founding the Sheriff of Sodium? Yeah, that's a good question. So I um, I got started with that site a couple of years ago, mainly as a way to um, immortalize some of the conversations that I was having on social media. Okay. Because, um, you know, things like Twitter are very, um, they're, they're, they're great for minute-to-minute uh, -minute conversations, but then a few minutes later, people have forgotten about it. Yeah. And um, and I felt like some of the points that I was making, I, I wanted to have a way to reference those in the future. And um, and at the time, the, the biggest thing that that was um, that was troubling me was the um, the the overemphasis on USMLE step one and residency okay. selection and medical education. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of what drew me into this. And um, and as a as part of learning about that, I've learned quite a bit about about some other things that have been interesting to other people as well also. Absolutely. So I guess we can jump right into kind of some of the content that is present on, on your blog. Um, starting with one of the recent articles, you mentioned you feel that there's an overemphasis on kind of USMLE uh, exams. And the recent article titled Breaking the Magic, uh, the three-digit USMLE score. Um, you talk a little bit about kind of your ideas on how that might be uh, kind of come up with, because there's a lot of kind of mystery around how is the score actually calculated. Would you walk us through a little bit of what's said in that post? Because as you mentioned, I think it's really, really interesting uh, for people to hear about. Sure. Yeah. So that's a that's a post that's sort of a part of a series of posts that I've made about uh, the nuts and bolts of the USMLE exam. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, initially my interest in that was uh, in you know, like I said, the fact that we uh, that the the USMLE Step One score has become this the the biggest idol in medical education that um, that our students have to pursue, you know, high scores at the expense of everything else in their lives and their education. And so, um, a couple of years ago, I started writing some posts about what the score actually means. You know, if you have somebody who has a 240 and a 250, are those two outcomes actually statistically um, different from one another? Right. Probably not. Um, and you know, after that post, um, you know, I, I get a, quite a bit of feedback from students' questions, and I hear from lots of interesting people. And if anybody out there is interested in, you know, chatting with me, I'm always interested to hear from people who read the site. But, um, you know, there's a particular genre of question that I get a lot of, and it's uh, it, it sort of falls into the heading of what I would consider sort of step one voodoo. You know, and people would ask me, you know, earnestly, uh, you know, do I need to take my step one exam? Um, on a different day than the students from my school who are the best test takers, because I don't want them to, to wow. break the curve. Okay. I, I heard from, yeah, I heard from one person who actually took the step one exam in a different country because he was under the impression that, um, that, that doing so would improve his score. Wow. And, you know, yes, there's this whole, uh, you know, infrastructure of, of uh, you know, um, cottage wisdom, and most of it's untrue about what the USMLE step one score means, how it's created. And so I finally decided just to, to make a quick nuts and bolts post about that. And the, the central insight is that, um, you know, the, the step one score or the step two CK score, same thing, is a, um, it's a scaled score. Mm -hmm. 
And it's basically a transformation of, um, of the standard score, you know, the Z score that comes from um, a test taker when they're compared to a reference group of examinees who have taken that version of the test at some point in the past. Mm -hmm. Wow, um, that's incredible. And I think that that's very interesting, specifically what you say about kind of some of the misconceptions that students have. Um, out of personal curiosity, what are some of the craziest uh, misconceptions that maybe you've heard? You mentioned taking it in a different country. Was there anything else that just really struck you as kind of like, wow, students are... Uh, maybe oh, yeah, there's, there's, there's many. So, I mean, um, I would say the most common ones are that, um, that every question has a different point, you know, value. Um, that's not true. Um, but that, that's something that I hear a lot is, um, oh, well, my score got dropped because I missed the high point questions. And I no, they're all they're all the same. I mean, some are some are more difficult than others, yeah. but um, but they all count equally as much as in, in the calculation of your raw score and the, you know, the mathematics that, that stem from that. Um, so that's a common one. Um, Another is the, uh, you know, which I kind of alluded to before, is the false precision of USMLE scores. Like, oh, you know, so and so got a 245. They're awesome. I got a 243. I'm a, I'm a dog. You know, it's a, it's a, we, we, we trust that number to, um, to provide, to inform decisions in a way that it's, it's not powered to do. Simply right. put. Right. So I'm sure, as you already know, you kind of mentioned in a way that it's, it's not powered to do. And I think some of these concerns were addressed by the decision to actually shift. Uh, USMLE step one to the pass fail scoring model instead of that numeric value that students kind of, you know, frankly tend to get a little bit crazy about sometimes. Um, and so I'm curious to know kind of what do you think some of the downstream effects for that might be in terms of uh, numeric value scoring for step two CK? You mentioned kind of it was the same thing a little bit earlier, uh, or maybe even for the MCAT or other standardized exams that also um, have these kind of scores. Yeah, so um, I, I think in the short term, I mean, the USMLE Step 1 exam will be returned to its original purpose, right. which is to make a binary decision about an applicant's or a candidate's fitness for receiving medical licensure. You know, the, the test was never intended to be the residency aptitude test, and it probably functions poorly as such. So Step 1 will be remanded to its original purpose. Step 2, I think, um, you know, of course, the pass-fail decision um, announcement honestly couldn't have come at a worse time. I mean, it was announced in February of 2020, just, okay. you know, weeks before COVID-19, um, you know, spread across the United States and, um, and drew away the focus of everyone in medical education from, um, you know, from doing anything to prepare for that change to simply trying to keep operations going, you know, through the pandemic, which of course was a, a Herculean task. And so, um, I think in the short term, um, for programs that are interested in, in a numeric screen, the USMLE Step 2 CK score will become the new king of residency selection. Right. And in, in a way, that's good insofar as the, um, the content of the USMLE Step 2 CK exam is, is at least content that's more relevant to the actual practice of medicine on human beings. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be detrimental in terms of the single-minded focus now taking over the, the clinical clerkships. And, um, and I do think that we're going to see negative consequences, you know, from that side of things in the years to come. And anything in terms of MCAT that maybe um, some of the kind of speculation is that potential. I mean, we don't really know what's going to happen. Kind of the, the idea is that step two CK is going to, like you said, kind of become the new primary factor in weighing if a candidate would be accepted to a given residency program in the way that step one is for many right now. Um, so one of the kind of uh, questions that students have is, are people going to be looking at, you know, my MCAT score and my step two CK score, or maybe my shelf exam scores and my step two CK score, or is all of that just going to fall on step two CK? Yeah. So I think step two CK is going to be the most important. I think that um, some programs um, will will look at MCAT scores. I do think that's going to occur. I, I personally think that's a, a foolish metric to use to predict residency selection, but uh, but I think that will occur. Mm -hmm. um, I think that subject exam scores will take on greater importance as well. There are movements afoot already um, from certain specialties to um, to have those scores included in the department chair's letter of recommendation for the specialty. 
you know, across the board. And um, uh, yeah, I, I perceive some some downsides of that as well. Um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, we're 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 living in an interesting time of uh, of you know, for these standardized tests. I mean, there has been a um, um, you know throughout the COVID nineteen pandemic, especially there was um, you know a grassroots movement afoot to limit the use of MCAT in in medical school admissions. Right. And actually, just this very week that we're recording this, um, the University of Cal California's undergraduate system announced that they're no longer going to consider. Uh, ACT and SAT scores in wow. making, um, you know, scholarship decisions, which is um, really an enormous announcement given the uh, the importance that the University of California system had in accepting those tests and leading to their primacy in higher education in general, right. um, you know, historically. Wow. All right. Well, we are coming up on time here. That was the last question that we had for these interviews. Um, thank you so, so much for being available to answer some of these questions. I think it's such an incredibly interesting topic talking about scoring and what pass fail is going to mean and all of this is speculation of course so maybe we'll have to interview you again once the change actually <laughs> happens uh to hear back but uh, this was wonderful thank you so much sure i'd be happy to do it i love talking about it and um and thinking about these things so um thanks again for having me awesome well, have a great day all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. All right, as I said, that is all the time that we have for this video. Thank you again to Brian for being part of this, talking about what it's like to be the sheriff of sodium, his most recent article uh, covering the numeric scoring for the USMLE exams and what that might mean after USMLE step one goes past fail. Um, so if you have any comments, questions, feel free to drop them below. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks again. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.